What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a look at the combat in Black Geyser, Couriers of Darkness, as it nears its early access launch. I was given this as a review copy a few days ahead of time, at the time this published at least. We are a few days ahead of its early access release and I kind of wanted to show off the combat and stuff and give some feedback just in case the uh, developers actually watch this. So we are going to be going over the basics. We're not going to go like, you know, super hardcore into it because that would be difficult to do for reasons I'm about to get into. First things first, this is a real-time with pause system. If you are familiar with the CRPGs of yesteryear, Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, that type of stuff, this should feel pretty natural to you, as well as more recent entries like, you know, say, Pillars of Eternity, etc. Before we jump into this, the reason I can't really go too deep into this is because the game chooses to use a percentile system, which is okay. But what I mean by that is that a lot of the stats and attributes and things you pick up will give you this percentile as a value of increase or decrease. And while generally that's easy to follow, if it's green and thus higher the percentile, it's better. The problem is I have no idea what that affects. And because of this, I can't tell you what the difference between light and medium armor actually is. I can't tell you how much armor I'm actually gaining it because it just shows you this uh, percentile for your evasion. And from what I've noticed, changing between light and medium armor doesn't really affect that unless the armor actually has a base amount of like evasion or something that it's adding. Now this extends to things like aim and accuracy. Here I have aim and accuracy of like 30-ish percent. However, when I hit something, I'm hitting much more than 30% of the time, so I'm assuming that's not my base to hit chance. But going off of this, I can't tell by looking at this, is this percentage that you're showing me on top of the base chance to hit? Or is this like an additive system, I mean, where is it's like the base chance plus the chance you're showing me? Or is this, for instance, like 30-ish percent of the base value added on top? So is it an increase of 30-ish percent of the base value? Obviously, I know that higher is better because I can see that. You've clearly marked it with the green positive feedback. However, at a high level, I can't tell what this means. There's no explanation beyond the fact that clearly higher is better. Now this is early access. They are looking for feedback. That is the point of early access. And as of right now, this is my single biggest criticism of the game. A lot of the stats and values it shows don't actually mean anything at a glance because I can't actually tell what these percentages are doing. Beyond that, let's actually jump into the basics. So there are four class archetypes. There are 14 classes. Now, all of those classes typically fall into one of our four archetypes, which are basically fighter, rogue, healer, or caster. We can multi-class. However, each class seems to be restricted in its multi-class options based on the initial class you pick. So you can pick up to three classes. But for instance, if we have our Templar, he can only pick from four classes for his second choice, and the third choice seems to have to be Druid. So it is not as free form as it might initially appear, but you can multi-class. Now, in addition to the obvious stuff that comes with those classes, each class also gets class abilities. These take a few different forms, but basically the fighter gets command company and force lock as an active ability. However, in addition to those, a fighter will also get more passive class skills that we don't necessarily see on our hotbar, such as seasoned warrior. Seasoned warrior will open up conversation options based on the fact that that character is a warrior. And then the more active stuff, the command company and force lock are things we can do in the world and actually interact with them. For instance, force lock lets you force locks. And then command company is actually especially interesting because for a fighter this allows you to set that fighter as the commander of the group and then pick a perk to confer to the group. Now these perks don't actually explain what they're doing at the moment. Again, early access, but that seems to be the gist of it. Now for our rogue thief types, it's pretty much what you'd expect. Hide, steal, uh, criminal underworld style dialogue. Clerics get a lot of cool stuff. They can pray, which will confer a bonus on rest. They have abolish curse, which will remove curses from items, which will bring down the dramatic positive effects, but completely remove the negative effects from the cursed item. They also get a passive ability that allows them to heal your companions for extra while you're resting. Warriors get a version of this where they get increased health region when you are resting outdoors. Casters get the prodigy skill, which is like mage conversation options, that type of stuff. They also get magical perception, which allows them to detect traps and things. So there's some cool class specific stuff that I thought was worth mentioning for sure. 
and then on to the actual combat itself. So the combat, again, real time with pause, it seems to follow the round system that most of these systems are actually based on. Though, again, nothing in game actually explains this to me, so I don't know if I'm attacking multiple times per turn or if it's just like once per turn or round rather but I can't tell any of that by looking at the screen. Though that said, it's obviously not too hard to figure out. You attack stuff. Melee is pretty straightforward, so is ranged. Equipment is basically what you'd expect. The UI, again, is very inspired by like early Baldur's Gate stuff, but the equipment itself is basically what you'd expect. There's magical items that can grant you uh, skill uses, that type of stuff. There are items that will affect specific damage resistances, etc. And then casters also follow the spell slot system that if you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons should be pretty straightforward. However, there is a bit of a twist on it. So you get spell slots and those are divided up into two different kinds. Base energy spell slots can hold base energy level spells. These are most of the regular spells you would expect and you can get more of these slots by increasing your character's intelligence. The elevated energy slots seem to be specifically for more utility focused spells. Now, at first, when I heard elevated energy, my first thought was, oh, this is like when you increase the spell level of something by casting it in a higher slot. That is not what this is. This is actually very specific spells that are tagged as elevated energy, which seems to be primarily utility spells. However, I will say it kind of reminds me of the domain slots that you kind of see in Pathfinder here and there, where it's like specific slots that are designated for specific spells that a character might learn. And you can, of course, learn spells from scrolls and things that you find. Other characters can cast from scrolls sometimes. So there's kind of the basics of the combat in Black Geyser. And again, I wanted to call out some specific things like the percentile system not being super intuitive at the moment. It is, again, early access. And in addition to some cooler things like the uh, separation of the base energy and elevated energy spell slots, as well as things like the class-specific skills, some of which are dialogue focused and some have unique effects on your party, for instance, when you rest. And then some are more active abilities. So there you go, guys. There is just a quick look at the basics of how combat is going to work in this game. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Because doing those things is what facilitates getting to show you guys things like this early. So again, truly, thank you guys for that. Each time somebody subscribes, you're helping make that kind of thing happen and helping me bring this content to you. So again, thank you. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.